comic fam, it's officially happened. There are too many hot comic books. Another week, another list of the comic books defining this generation of collectors, and we got the kingpin on the mic, the leader of the Gempire, Gem Mint from Gem Mint Collectibles. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, and this is the first video that we're recording post us both seeing Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. I'm interested to see if the list turned out the way that you thought it would. Slap the like and hit the subscribe button. We're here every single week for the comic community talking about the comics causing a ruckus in the marketplace. At the list at number 10, the first appearance of M'Baku debuting in 1969, Avengers 62. And we were just talking about this on our last live stream on the channel. You guys should come swing by. We do live streams every Sunday. We still don't know what the Black Panther Wakanda Forever movie is going to be about. Is Umbaku going to take over as the Black Panther? I think it's a good spec book, and it looks like other collectors agree. We have a CGC 9.2, which sold for $540 back in 2021, up now 122%, selling for $1,200. We've heard shitty spec. We've even heard Killmonger spec, but we have a 9.4 to discuss. Selling just in April for $1,800 for a CGC 9.4, up 6%, now selling for 1900 If you enjoy what we do, hit the link in the description, do yourself a solid, and download the app where we source all this information from Key Collector Comics. Utilize Code Tom 101 to support the show, but get access to the app in its entirety. Catalog your comic books, get suggested pricing, access to this list prior to us hitting the mic and so much more at the list at number nine thor 134 debuting in 1966 the first appearance of the high evolutionary who we now know will play a major role in guardians of the galaxy volume three we also know that there's going to be a focus on rocket raccoon who has an origin tied to the high evolutionary and the key alert mentioned that inside sources had claimed that this would be a villain although not the main villain but featured in the movie nonetheless and then seemingly confirmed by james gunn tying chuck woody awuji you know him from peacemaker as being the prime actor for the role we have multiple record breakers and this book has been climbing since the announcement yeah, those mid-grade CGC 5.5 to 7.5, they've been selling for two to three times higher than what they sold for back in 2020. And they're selling for about $150 to $200 higher than what they sold for last year in those mid-ranges. We had an 8.0 hit the market this week, selling for the second highest it's ever gone for. The record was set in September 2021, selling for 1200 This past week, it hit 1100 So close for such an expensive book. Members are investing now before it goes up even more. And it didn't stop with the 8.0. We have a CGC 9.0 that came to market. Didn't break record. It's actually the second highest sale ever. The highest sale was January's $2,200 sale. So somebody got a really good deal with this new second highest sale of $1,900. $150. And Jim, what's this? A repeat offender, a book that we broke down last week thinking that it was prime to secure now before it goes up even more. Yeah, at the list of number eight, we have Fantastic Four annual number six debuting in 1968. First appearance of Annihilus and of Franklin Richards, a personal spec book of mine and others. I know very Gary's probably happy to see this one on the list again. And I started to text him while watching Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness when they mention Reed Richards having children. So it's like Franklin Richards exists in the MCU somewhere in the multiverse. But that's the thing. Anyone can exist in the multiverse. Causing this book to not only have a 233% increase of sales this week over last. Not only are we seeing major movement on this comic book this past week, those average sales are trending at a rate of 1.5x higher than they sold back in 2020. Comic Butch says what's up. We're also benefiting from the trickle down effect of that CGC 9.8 that sold for 30 <laughs> that sold for $33,600. This week, we have a CGC 9.6. Now, this sold for $7,200 back in 2019, and it's up 136%, selling for $17,000. Jam, you know what we call this book? What's that? A double key. At the list at number seven, Batman 251, debuting in 1973. A classic Neil Adams cover. The modern-day reworking of the Joker as a homicidal maniac and less of a comedian. And I'll remind the community about the April 30th, 9.8 major record breaker that last sold in 2021 for $11,100, breaking records last month, selling for 35K. We warned you about the trickle-down effect. 
and it's arrived. After the passing of comic book legend Neil Adams, uh, collectors have been going out and purchasing some of his iconic works. This didn't make the Hot 10 last week. It was on the honorable mentions, but it's here today with these record-breaking sales. A 7.0 back in July 2021 went for $875. That's up 3% selling for $900. The CGC 9.4 sold for $3250 back in April, and that's up 11% now selling for $3600. Moving on on the list to number 6, we have Tales of the New Teen Titans issue 44, the first appearance of Nightwing. Debuting in 1984, we have a legacy character, Dick Grayson, taking on the persona of Nightwing, where he was formerly known as Robin. New character design done by late comic legend George Perez. This is also a double key, as it's the origin of Deathstroke. We have a 9.2 Mark Jeweler to discuss. The 9.2 went for $180 back in December. It's up 122% with this all-new record-breaking sale of $400, which brings us to the regular CGC 5.5. That sold for just $51 back in 2019. That's up 67% now, selling for $85. I've always thought that this was an underrated book. Butch loves it. The 7.5 went for $75 just in January. That's up 37% selling for 103. The 90 going for 159 in February is up 7% now selling for 170. Another comic book legend that we've lost recently, George Perez as well. And Nightwing, one of my favorite titles out right now. The Tom Taylor run is incredible. So nice to see some DC love on the list because we've mentioned these keys have been undervalued for some time. Moving on over to number five, we have a Silver Age Spider-Man book on the list. We have ASM, issue 19. Debuting in 1964, we have the first appearance of Mac Gargan, who would become the Scorpion in full in ASM, issue 20. I think as long as the comic book market is healthy, we're going to see Spider-Man keys sell and appreciate. And what's cool about what they're doing with Spider-Man, you don't know what they're going to do next. They could still do the Sinister Six. We could still get more Scorpion, so that's yet to be seen. We have a CGC.5 that broke record. This book sold for $57 in 2020, and it's up 58% now selling for 90 the 8.5 went for $850 in just March, clearing the $1,000 marker this week, an increase of 29% selling for 11 Hondo Hot. Damn, comic fan. Which brings us to a high-grade CGC 9.6. It sold for $4,123 back in November, and it's up 19%, now selling for $4,888. And sticking with Silver Age Spider-Man, now we're seeing Amazing Spider-Man Issue 1, the Golden Records reprint showing up on the list. What's this, Jam? Another reprint making our list this week. We've been covering the Hot 10 for over a year. Hit the subscribe button, comic fam. But this right here is a special occasion. It is demonstrating the interest of collectors basically giving up on the blue chip silver age books because they become so out of reach and starting to navigate towards what they can attain reprints are more affordable and this right here is showcasing where collectors interests have moved to however i want the members of our channel to recognize that it's not just these areas of opportunities this right here demonstrates that the other variants newsstands whitman's even restored copies i'm talking green label books should be on the spec radar they could be next and these are like the original reprints like coming up five years or so after the original uh almost the first facsimile if you will so they're very cool to collect not to say that they're worth the same as the original but hey like i said the first reprints a cgc 8.0 which sold for 1377 dollars back in march is up 38 percent now selling for 1900 an 8.5, which sold for $1,400 in February, is up 7%, now selling for $1,500. Then we have the 9.2, going for $1,938 back in August, up 29% selling for an easy $2,500. If you enjoy what we do, hit the link in the description. Support the show directly by joining the Mystery Mail Call, my comic book subscription service. We are an active enrollment for the June MMC and one per box announcing it today. We have all new Fantastic Four number one by Alex Maleev. We have our first Kang the Conqueror cover. 
Perfect timing. We haven't seen or heard much from Kang since the end of Loki, and we're ready to get Marvel's next big bad villain. Moving on to number three, we have Fantastic Four, issue 46, the first full appearance of Black Bolt, second in Humans, and now we can speak freely. It made the list last week. We got Black Bolt back in the MCU. Now, admittedly, I didn't watch the uh, Inhumans IMAX show, but it was still cool to see him until he blew his own brains out. So now where do we go? Well, there's one thing that we've learned from Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness is that characters exist in the multiverse. And just because we saw Black Bolt's time on the screen come and go in one movie, along with Reed Richards, along with Captain Carter, doesn't mean that we're not going to see him again. This right here was probably my favorite moment in the movie. And I love how they set up his narrative. Have him be the person to kill Doctor Strange in his own universe to demonstrate his power in full, but then have him be the cause of his own demise courtesy of Wanda. Which brought the CGC 4.0 from a $283 book just past April, up 14% now, selling for $322. A 5.5 sold for $445 back in March, that's up 8%, now selling for $480. And Tom, let him know about the 7.5. Going for $770 back in February prior to the movie's release, but when spec was at its all-time height... This week, an increase of 17%, selling for $900. Next at the list at number two, one of the most undervalued books of the Bronze Age era. By the way, let me know what you think about this list. It'll enter you to win this Omni-Man, Invincible number one, whatnot variant. By commenting down below, let's talk about Star Wars number two. With the Obi-Wan series debut nearly days away, it makes sense that collectors are picking up the first comic book appearance of Obi-Wan Kenobi, of Han Solo, of Chewbacca, and many more. This is the first time we see the Death Star in comic books, the Millennium Falcon, and we have a major 9.8 record breaker, but not before we tell you about the Whitman edition. You can tell that this is a reprint. It's a newsstand that has the black diamond box in the top left corner of the book and a UPC box on the bottom left. We have a 5.0 going for $105 back in February, up 176%, landing at 290 but it didn't stop there. We have a 7.5 standard edition going for 170 back in April, up 6%, now selling for 180. And then the CGC 9.8 that Tom alluded to, it sold for $5,000 in April. We had another sale of 5,600, but then 22% increase for the all new record breaker, selling for 6,100. This book could have been secured for under $2,000 at this grade earlier this year when we started telling you about it. Hit the subscribe button, comic fam, and at the list at number one, the hottest book in the multiverse, the multiverse of madness in any timeline you can pick. We have the most unique superhero of all time, the macabre meets the hero. We have Ghost Rider number one, debuting in 1973. A double key being that it's the first solo Ghost Rider series and the first cameo appearance of Damien Hellstrom, a CGC 9.2, tied with its previous high record, selling for $2,000 this week. But we have record breakers in low grades, entry level affordable grades if you will, a CGC 2.0 sold for $57 back in 2017. It's up 207%, now selling for $175. And a 4.5 going for 470 in January. There's been a lot of rumors about Johnny Blaze being introduced to the MCU with characters like Moon Knight, characters like Morbius, the more supernatural being introduced to the MCU. Members are hunting for Ghost Rider appearances, which is why this book is up 19%, selling for $559 this week. We appreciate your time today, comic fam. As always, geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said. Comic fam, you already know, every Wednesday, Jam Mint and myself and the rest of my homies get together on the best new app to buy and sell collectibles, whatnot, available for both Androids and iPhones. But this week at Megacon in Florida, you can see me in person. I have multiple streams scheduled. Go to my profile, bookmark them all. I'm hunting for exclusives, I'm hunting for keys, and I'm bringing the giveaways from Thursday all the way to Sunday. And if you're in Florida at the con, come check me out at the Whatnot booth or look for me and Heron Heavens in the comics section. We be hunting. Have a great week.